Hello dear students, how are you doing? I'm very fine. Today we are going to see uh, infinite series. Infinite series. Uh, infinite series. After revising this lesson, uh, you should be able to one determine whether a series converges or diverges. Second, uh, you are expected to compute some of infinite uh, some of infinite series. So now let's proceed to uh, the lesson. Now let's see this one. Let a and b uh, a sequence, and s and b the sum of n terms of this sequence. As n goes to infinity, if s n goes to s, where where s is a finite real number, where s is a finite unique, a finite unique. A finite unique number, then we say that this infinite series converges. Otherwise, it diverges. Otherwise, if S does not exist, it uh, diverges. So uh, now let's see example for this. Determine whether the following series converges or diverges. Now let's start from the first one. The sum of to the power of n, where n starts from 1 up to uh, infinity. So the sum of to the power of n, when n starts from 1 up to infinity, is written in this form. Uh, the first term is this uh, to the power of 1, this 2 plus 4 plus, it goes on like this. When you see this, it is a geometric uh, sequence with first term is 2 and the common ratio, if you take ratio, 4 over 2 it is 2, 8 over 4 it is 2, and so on. So it is a geometric sequence with first term 2 and common ratio 2. So uh, the sum will be evaluated in this form, in this form. Sn applying the formula, applying the formula, g1 times r raised to n minus 1 over r minus 1. So this is equivalent to Sn is equal to uh, g1 is 2, r is also it is 2 to the power of n minus 1 over 2 minus 1. So this implies Sn is equal to 2 to the power of, when you multiply these two, it is 2 to the power of n plus 1. You can add the exponent to the power of n plus 1, 2 times 1 it is, uh, it is 2 over 1. So this will be the answer. So the limit of this sequence as n goes to infinity, the limit of this sum, as n goes to infinity is this to the power of infinity minus 2 almost it goes on infinity. So we didn't find a finite number, unique finite number as n goes to infinity. So this sequence diverges. This sequence diverges. So uh, hence the series diverges. Now let's see another example. This one. Uh, negative 1 the power of n where n starts from 1 up to infinity. This one, the first term is this minus 1, second term is square root, it is positive 1, minus 1, positive 1, it goes on like this. So when you add this, you get 0 if the number of terms are even. If you take, for example, if the terms are 2, cancel it out, the answer will be 0. If you take the term 4 terms, these two cancels, these two, and so on. So uh, this sum is t0 when n is even, and minus 1 when n is odd. 
Therefore, therefore, as n goes to infinity, as n goes to infinity, the sum, the sum will go to either to zero or minus one. So it doesn't go to unique number. Therefore, this sequence also diverges. This sequence also diverges. Since a thing does not approach to a unique number, it doesn't approach to a unique number as n goes to infinity. Hence, the series diverges. Now, the, the third example is this one, 1 over 2, the power of n, the sum of this, where n starts from 1 up to infinity. So uh, this is equal to, when you put 1 here, you get 1 over 2, and second term, it is 1 over 4, 1 over 8, it goes on like this. So this is it is, it is a geometric sequence, with the first term is 1 over 2, and the common ratio is also 1 over 2. So I can find the sum, uh, or the n partial sum. The n partial sum of this sequence is its SN is equal to G1, it is 1 over 2, times R raised to n, it is 1 over 2 to the power of n, minus 1 over R minus 1. So when you evaluate this, you get this one, 1 minus 1 over 2 to the power of n. So uh, this is uh, the n partial sum. When n goes to infinity, when n goes to infinity, this sum becomes 1 over 2 to the power of n. So I can write here, this is 1 minus 1 over 2 to the power of n. So when n goes to infinity, this becomes infinity. 1 divided by a very big number goes to 0. So 1 minus 0 is 1. So this sequence, this sequence, uh, converges to converges to 1. As n goes to infinity, Sn goes to 1. Therefore, since it converges to, to a unique number, hence the series converges, sequence converges. Okay, so let's proceed to, proceed to the other part, this one. Uh, we are asked to determine whether this uh, sequence diverges or converges. So, to n minus 1, where n starts from 1 up to infinity, this means when you put 1 here, 2 times 1 is 2 minus 1, 1 plus 3, and it goes down like this. So, when you see this sequence, it is an arithmetic sequence with first term is 1, and the common difference, it increased by 2, the, so the common difference is 2. So, the n partial sub uh, is given by using the arithmetic formula, sum of arithmetic progression formula, Sn is equal to this one. So, putting the numbers, Sn is equal to n over 2 twice of a1, a1 is this 1 twice of a1 plus n minus 1, the common difference it is 2. Therefore, when you simplify this, uh, you get this one, Sn, n over 2 times 2n, n squared. The answer will be this, Sn is n squared. So as n goes to infinity, as n goes to infinity, n squared also goes to infinity. So Sn goes to infinity. As, as n goes to infinity, Sn goes to infinity. Since we didn't get a finite unique number, this series also diverges. This series also diverges. Therefore, uh, as n goes to infinity, Sn also goes to infinity. So the series diverges. OK, now. Let's continue to the other part. Uh, let's see this one. If Gn is, it is a geometric series with common ratio R, then Sn is given by this formula. We said this earlier. Now, I can write this in this form. Sn is equal to G1 times R raised to N over R minus 1 minus G1 over R minus 1. But, but, for R is between 1 and negative 1, R is doing goes to, uh, goes to 0. Look, let's take 1 over 2. If you take 1 over 2, we said, we have seen this earlier, 1 over 2 to the power of n, when n goes to infinity, this goes to this, when n goes to, uh, let's take the limit of this one, the limit, when n goes to infinity of this term, it is, it goes to uh, zero. Therefore, therefore, here, if r is a fractional number, fractional number, 
R is, or that I mean, it's a number between negative 1 and 1. So R to the power of n will go to 0 when n goes to infinity. Therefore, from this, uh, for n goes to infinity, this becomes 0. This becomes 0. So this part becomes 0 for when n goes to infinity. So the remaining part is only this part. This minus g1 over r minus 1. So taking minus to the denominator part and multiplying, multiplying it, you get g1 over 1 minus r. So this SCN will go to g1 over 1 minus r as n goes to infinity, as n goes to infinity. So finally, you will have this formula. It is uh, the, the sum of infinite term of a series is given by g1 over 1 minus r, where r is absolute value of r, absolute value of r less than 1, or r must be between, between negative 1 and 1. It is only for this case we apply this formula. Otherwise, we can't. It diverges. The sequence will diverge in that case. So now let's see example for this part. Evaluate this. 1 minus 3 over 5 plus 9 over 25 minus 27 over 105 plus, and it goes on. You are asked to find infinite term of this series. So to find that, we need to find first g1. G1, the first term is it is 1. And the common ratio, when you take the common ratio, you get it is negative 3 over 5. Since negative 3 over 5 is between negative 1 and 1, you can apply the, this formula. The formula is infinite sum of the series is given by G1 over 1 minus R. So putting the numbers in the formula, the infinite sum will be this G1 is this 1 over 1 minus the common ratio, here it is negative 3 over 5. So this becomes plus, you get this result. It's equal to, it is, it is S infinite is equal to 1 over the sum of this, it is 8 over 5. When you divide this, you get 5 over 8. So infinite sum of this uh, series, it is 5 over 8. Now let's continue to another example. Example 2. Okay, I'll ask you to evaluate this one. Cos 60 degree plus cos square 60 degree cos cube 60 degree. It goes on like this. So to find this infinite sum, first we need to uh, see the terms of uh, this series. Uh, okay, so since you know this, cos 60 is 1 over 2. Cos 60 is 1 over 2. This means 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 2 cubed, and it goes on like this. Therefore, this is equal to 1 over 2 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8, and it goes on. So this is this, a geometric series with the first term is 1 over 2, and the common ratio is also 1 over 2. So you can apply uh, the formula S infinite is equal to G1 over 1 minus R. So applying the formula, applying this formula, you will have this. S infinite is equal to the first term, it is 1 over 2 over 1 minus the common ratio is 1 over 2. So simplifying this, you will have this one. It's 1 over 2. 1 minus 1 over 2 is 1 over 2. When you take the ratio, you will get 1. This is the answer. Now let's continue to the third example. The third example is this one. Find the sum of the series, or the sum of this is uh, equal to uh, how much? So let's try to find this. So here, the sum of negative 4 times 3 over 4 to the power of n minus 1, and start from 1 up to infinity. This is equal to, using summation property, you can take out negative 4 outside from the sum. Notation, sum summation notation. So this is equal to this negative 4 into the summation of 3 over 4 to the power of n minus 1, n starts from 1 up to infinity. So this is equal to, this negative 4 is factored out. So to this sum means, the first term, when you put 1 here, 1 minus 1 is 0. This 3 over 4, the power of 0 is 1. So 1 plus 2 minus 1 is 1. 3 over 4, the power of 1 is 3 over 4 plus, it goes on like this, 1 plus 3 over 4 plus 9 over 16 plus, and so on. 
So when you see this part, it is a geometric series with first term is 1. And the common ratio, when you take the ratio of these two, it is 3 over 4. The ratio of these two also gives you 3 over 4. Therefore, uh, it is common ratio is 3 over 4. The first term is 1. So uh, the answer will be it is, it is negative 4 times infinite sum is given by is infinite is g1 over 1 minus r. So g1 is 1 over 1 minus r is this 3 over 4. So that's it. Now simplifying this, you get this answer. This is equal to negative 4 times 1 over this is 1 over 4. So uh, taking the reciprocal of this, multiplying by negative 4, you get negative 16. The answer it is negative 16. Let's continue to the other example. Example 4. This question is given. The sum of 5, the power of k are where k starts from 1 up to infinity is given to be 1 over 4. So you are asked to find the value of r. You are asked to find the value of r. So from this, look this one. Summation of this means it is 5 to the power of, when you put 1, it is 5 to the power of r. When you put 2 on place of k, 5 to the power of 2r plus, 5 to the power of 3r plus, it goes on. And the result is given to be this 1 over 4. So from this, you can see that this is this a geometric. It is a geometric series with the first term is 5 to the power of r. With a common ratio, if you take the ratio of the 2, the ratio of the 2, you get 5 to the power of r. First term, 5 to the power of r. And the common ratio is also, it is 5 to the power of r. And the sum it converges. Since the sum converges, we can apply the formula uh, S infinite is equal to G1 over 1 minus R. Using that formula, you have this one. G1 is this 5 to the power of R over 1 minus R is also, we say it is 5 to the power of R. This result is equal to 1 over 4. So solving this, uh, we will uh, find the value of R. So multiplying, uh, cross multiplying, it's 4 by uh, 5 to the power of R and 1 by this, you get this one. Take minus 5 to the power of R to this side, you will have this one. And take this, uh, it becomes 4 times 5 to the power of R plus 5 to the power of R. So this means it is 4 to the power of R and 1 to five the power of R means it is 5 to the power of 5 times 5 to the power of r, the product of the two it is 5 to the power of r plus 1. 5 to the power of r plus 1 is equal to it is 1. From this, this means I can write this 5 in the form of 5 to the power of 0. So this implies that r plus 1 is it is 0. Therefore, it is r plus 1 is 0. So the final answer will be it is r is equal to negative 1. Okay, the fifth example uh, is uh, this one. Let's see this. A ball is dropped from a height of 100 meter. It's dropped from a height of 100 meter. It's dropped from 100 meter above flat surface. And in each bounds, it rebounds 75% of the distance it fell. So, you are asked to find the total vertical distance covered by the ball before coming to rest. Look, let's see this uh, uh, graphically or pictorially. A ball, assume this is a flat surface. A ball is dropped from this height. This height is it is 100 meter. So, and it rebounds. So it rebounds to the height of 75% or 3 volts of 100. It rebounds that much height. Therefore, this height is this 3 fourths of, it is 100, 3 fourths of 100. And it fills also down. And it continues like this. The next, it rebounds 3 volts of this one, 3 fourths of, uh, it fills. It fills 3 fourths of 100 meter, or it is when you simplify 75 meters. This it is 75. So it fills 75 meters. So on the next rebound, uh, it 
rebound is 3 fourths of 75, 3 fourths of 75 or this result. So it goes on like this, it goes on like this. So we are asked to find the vertical distance, the total vertical distance traveled by this uh, ball, 100 meter plus 75 meter, twice 75 meter because it rebounds 75 and come down 75 meters. So twice 75 meter. Here also, uh, 3 fourths of 75, it moves up 3 fourths of 75, it moves down 3 fourths of 75. So we, we have two distances here, we have two distances only, single stance, we have single stance here. So uh, writing this, uh, writing this in summation form, uh, you will have this one. S in the first folds, it is 100 meter, plus on the next uh, fold, uh, rebound is uh, 75 meter. So we have 75 twice. Uh, next to that, also we have it rebounds 3 fourths of 75, but it moves up and down. We have two distances here, uh, and so on, and so on. So from this, uh, you will have this one. The sum of these terms will be, uh, it is 100 plus this 75, it rebounds 75, falls 75 twice. Don't forget this one. Uh, on the next uh, rebound also, it rebounds 3 fourths 75, it rebounds and falls so, so twice. This also distance twice, all are twice. Therefore, 100 is single numbers, it only falls down. Therefore, 100 plus twice of, when you see this term, when you see this term, it is a geometric sequence with first term 75, and the common ratio, it is 3 over 4. When you take the ratio of these two, you get 3 over 4. The ratio of these two, it is 3 over 4. Therefore, it is this one it is a geometric uh, series with first term 75, and the common ratio 3 over 4. I can find the infinite sum of these uh, numbers. So 100 plus twice of this is this g1 is 75 over 1 minus r. Infinite sum is given by, you know this, this g1 over 1 minus r. So g1 is 75 over 1 minus the common ratio is this 3 over 4. Therefore, when you evaluate this, 100 plus twice of, when you simplify this, you get 300. So the final answer uh, will be this 700 meters. So the total distance uh, moved by the ball is this almost 700 meter. Now let's see one uh, last example for this. Look this one. Uh, here a ball is thrown vertically upward in this case. It's not falling, it's moving up. A ball is uh, thrown vertically upward to a maximum height of 100 meter above a flat surface and it fails and bounces. So look this one. Let's take this, it's a flat surface, you know, this is a flat surface. A ball is just thrown up in this case. It's thrown up, it moves up and falls. The maximum height traveled here, it is given to be 100, 100 meter. And then it rebounds. It rebounds 75% of the distance it fails. So it fails how much? It is 100 meter. So it rebounds 75% or 3 fourths of 100. So it moves 3 fourths of 100 up and down. On the next bounce, it rebounds 3 fourths of the distance it fails. The distance it fails is, it is 3 fourths of 100. 3 fourths of 100 and it goes on like this. So, you are asked to find the total distance traveled by this ball before coming to rest. So, when you write the sum, the sum is equal to 100, it moves up and down twice. Twice of 100 plus here also it moves up 3 fourths of 100 moves down 3 fourths of 100, twice of, twice of, twice of, 3 fourths of, twice of 3 fourths of, 100. Plus, on the next one, it is 
twice this also twice of uh, three fourths of three fourths of one hundred and it goes on like this. So plus it goes on like this. Therefore, to find the infinite sum, S infinite is equal to you can take two outside, two outside, you will have this one hundred plus the next term it is three fourths of hundred, three fourths of hundred plus on the next term this one just we are factored out to three fourths three fourths of hundred or nine sixteenths of one hundred nine over sixteenths of one hundred plus it goes on like this so when you see this when you see this it is it's a geometric progression with the first term one hundred and the common ratio is three over four take the ratio of these two take zero of these two you get the common ratio to be three over four therefore the infinite sum, the infinite sum, this is equal to this, it's equal to twice of uh, g1 is it is 100 it is over 1 minus r. Our r is it is 3 over 4 here. So the infinite sum is this one. Therefore, this is equal to twice of or 200 uh, times 1 over 200 times 1 over. This is 1 minus. Uh, 3 over 4 is equal to this 1 over 4. This is 1 over 4. So taking the reciprocal, multiplying by 200, you get the answer. This result you get it is 800 meters. So the total distance traveled by this pole is almost is 800 meters. So this is this answer. So the final answer is this uh, 800 meter. So this is this. Uh, all about uh, today's lesson so you can try these uh, exercises by yourself so until next class or next lecture class goodbye